Okay, journal maintenance project on my 1995 Toyota 4Runner, better known to the folks over at Japan, the Hilux Surf. Um, I got two belts over here. Actually, I got three, um, technically, because I'm replacing a timing belt um, and also a water pump. But the um, reason why I'm also including the AC belt and the alternator belt is because since the accessory belts gets in the way, I'm gonna go ahead and replace those. This over here is a uh, is the thermostat. Thermostat, and in, deepens down inside. There's a um, thermostat outlet uh, pipe. I'm not gonna take that out because um, you'll see in the in the video um, along later on in the video that you're gonna you're gonna see that pipeline for it. Over here, um, here's a timing belt component kit, um, which is basically a, uh, it's kind of like a flashbang grenade, or stun grenade, or something like that, I don't know what's it called in the military, but uh, basically it's a timing belt tensioner, it's a piece that allows the timing belt tensioner to tension the timing belt, and it uses a little uh, grenade puller, just this thing right here, hence the hence the, um, it's the reason why it looks like um, to me it kind of looks like a flashbang grenade in a way, or a stun grenade if you want to call that. Thing. That's the timing belt component kit. Let's see if I can get this thing up in my there we go. And then this one over here, this is the timing belt and water pump. And we've got the gasket over here. Oh, there. there's the gasket. And there's the gasket for the thermostat. Um, we got the coolant inlet, I believe, which is this one goes actually goes from the engine to the top of the radiator. And then, um, I forgot what this one is. Oh, belt tensioner bearing. So this is the one that actually allows the timing belt component kit to um, push on it. So that's the ten this is the tensioner thing. And um, the timing belt's over here. And this is the, the water pump itself. Basically, um, it pushes coolant through a turbine and spins it right up. So that's what I got today for for today's project for my 1995 Forerunner. The reason why I'm doing this is because my car is leaking coolant and or antifreeze, I would say. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'll get that fixed before anything goes wrong. So I'll get to work on it. I also forgot to mention that um. Um, this is what my belts are going to be arranged. This is the accessory belts um, for my car. So everything's all in triangles. And um, that's what it looks like. That's my accessory drive belts. That's the one before I get to the timing belt. And then here's the timing belt itself and it's arranged this way. So this is, you're looking at the front of the front of the engine. And then this is the passenger side, and that's the driver's side. I did say right camshaft this way and left camshaft. That's when you're that's when you're um, sitting inside the car. So hope that doesn't confuse you guys. But this is what the timing belt is arranged on my car. My car has the V6 code name 3VZE. All right, I just want to go ahead and go check underneath the car. Um, I also did say that before that my AC wasn't working. Looks like I found my problem. There's, there's the AC compressor down there. There's no belt. No wonder my car is just sauna inside. So while I wait to for the coolant to drain, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I'm gonna be doing. Um, I'm gonna take this radiator hose out. I'm gonna take this piece out 
and take this timing cover out and also get these get these accessory belts out of here so we can get access to the crankshaft pulley and these two camshaft pulleys that you're not that you don't see currently but you're gonna see it once we're once we get this off. Look at this alternator belt guys. This thing's already waiting for hail to break loose. Good thing I got another one. All right, so I am making some progress here. Um, uh, I'm just examining the timing belt over here. Um, it looks to be in, still in good shape, but um, tension-wise, give it a little push and see if that thing is worn out. Push. By the way, these are all zeroed in. I zeroed in the crankshaft, I zeroed in the cams. So uh, This thing is still pretty good. Um, but I'm still going to replace the timing belt since I got the whole new water pump set, which included a new timing belt. I'm also going to replace this. You won't see it here. I'm going to replace the uh, tension uh, module over here. I'm also going to replace this too. And the water pump, which sits right behind here somewhere. At least I don't have to go back, back here again and replace some stuff. Light, it's nice to do the job in one, in one piece. So I'll do some more inspections and I'll do some more disassembling. All right, this is the second day of the Toyota 4Runner. Um, water pump replacement and timing belt replacement. Fortunately, I can't get to the timing belt just yet. And this is the second day actually that you're watching this part of the video. Cause this stupid thing, this is the crankshaft bolt. This thing is a real pain in the ass to get out. Um, um, stupid me, I used a 3 8 breaker bar to do the bump start method and it broke the freaking head out. It broke, not broke the head off this bolt, but it broke my uh, breaker bar. Um, and broke my 3 breaker bar. I have a, I have a half inch over there that's sitting on that ladder, on top of that ladder. Um, I just need to get myself a 19 millimeter um, um, socket with the, with the half inch drive on it. So, because um, I looked up on Google and they said that. 300 foot pounds um, can normally take um, is the will break 300 foot pounds would break a uh, half inch drive um, breaker bar and this bolt right here is torqued down to 181 foot pounds and the reason why the 3 8 broke on this thing is because the 3 8 drive usually breaks at a, around 131 foot pounds Whereas the uh, half inch that's sitting over there on top of that ladder can take 300 foot pounds. So hopefully, if I do the bump start method again, hopefully this will come out with the half inch breaker bar. We'll see, I'm still experimenting. I'm totally new to this stuff. Um, I've never done a timing belt and crank, not crankshaft. I've never done a timing belt and water pump replacement on this particular car or nor this particular engine because this engine is from Forerunners and Tacomas from 19 from the 80s till 1995, which this Forerunner is made. This is the last Forerunner model year of this generation before they switched on to the third generation from 1996 to the early 2000s. So hopefully I'm going to try to um, get that stupid thing out, and because um, I want to get this thing done today. Oh yeah, baby! Did that. Thank you, Forerunner. Uh, thank you, Forerunner groups on Facebook. Cause uh, check this out. Did the bump start method? Oh hell, freaking yeah! Thank you, Forerunner owners. Now we can continue working on it. All right. 
So that's already been removed. Now we go, I can go ahead and take off the lower timing cover and also this little bracket over here too. Okay, this would normally be day three of working on this 1995 Toyota 4Runner. Uh, this is the one with the 3VZE. This is the 3 liter V6, better known to the car enthusiasts as 3 point slow because it's notorious for being kind of underpowered. But you know, it doesn't really need a whole lot to get this thing moving. Um, I know it's kind of dark, so I apologize for that. But so far, we got the water pump removed. I got the old water pump in a, in a Ziploc bag and stuff. Um, I'm going to replace the um, timing belt tensioner um, unit. Not this, not this piece, but the, um, possibly this piece, but the unit uh, where the, the spring-loaded unit will, will allow this thing to push up. That um, I'm going to be replacing. Um, I got the timing, the timing was all zeroed out. The, the white marks now lining up on that, on the on this camshaft. And then over here in this camshaft, you will not see it clearly, but um, uh, the white is now lining up to that white up there. And then you probably may not see down here, but I also got that crankshaft zeroed out too. I'm not going to be replacing the radiator since this one is still perfectly fine. Um, if I do need to replace this anytime soon, it's, that's all right. I can just drain the coolant and just, you know, take some hoses out and then get this out because this is literally just in front of me anyways. Um, I'm going to be putting a new belt on this, on that AC compressor because my car is a sauna and uh, every time it gets hot in the car and AC, AC doesn't work. Um, anyways, um, I want to show you guys all these Ziploc bags. It looks kind of messy over here, but trust me, they're all organized. I actually numbered these um, Ziploc bags. That's the first one I actually took out. And then this is number two for the fan shroud. Uh, the fan itself, three, four. I actually wrote down a little number four. This is the nine, number five, which is the timing cover. Number six, um, oh, it's a bracket. Um, number seven, this will be the, yeah, uh, part of the crankshaft with harmonic, harmonic bouncer. Uh, uh, yeah, this is the crankshaft. Number eight, and then I believe this is uh, number, number nine, timing tensioner. And then I also wrote down number 10 over here for the for the fan bracket itself, number 11 for the lower timing cover. And I also written down front and back because this one's actually um, con convexed on on this side, on the back side's convexed. And then here's the water pump itself. Uh, and then this, this bag also has some bolts for it. So it's ex even though it kind of looks messy, it's extremely organized. I have everything all all numbered out. So at least the f number one is the first thing that came out of when I actually disassembled the car, uh, the, the car's motor. And then uh, I worked my way backwards. So at least, if, for example, this is number 12 and that's number one over there. When I dis disassembled the car, that's number one and that's the last. And then if I want to work backwards, it's 12 and then back to one. So that's how, how I'm doing it. But uh, so far we are actually making some progress. The reason why I'm not putting, I'm skipping this day for for now is number one, I'll take a break uh, working on this car. And number two, the fact that um, the parts that came in were incorrect. So uh, yeah, good thing the new parts will be coming on, coming in tomorrow. So hopefully those parts are correct. And once those are correct, we'll get to work on this thing. It's kind of dark here, but I just want to show you guys what we got so far. We got the new water pump in. And uh, everything's all set up and whoops. Yeah. 
the light. So now it's stuck. But uh, we also got a new pipe down there. We got a new pipe installed here to go to the heater. And then that will go into the thermostat right over there. Right there. And that extra pipeline, that extra outlet pipe is gonna go to this part of the radiator. All right. So here's the timing belt. Ready to go ahead and put this thing into the car. So this is what the pattern is gonna be. I'll show you a picture of it on separately and you'll see what it looks like on the engine. grenade pin. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and install, install the belts. Um, I'm still gonna go ahead and start off with the alternator because the alternator is already, it's already at the back. So, and the back pulleys has these rivets that you can probably see over here. I got the diagram drawn out here, so this is what it will look like. So everything's all going to be in triangles. So the alternator belt's going to go like this. And the alternator itself is the tension point. This is hopefully my last final update on the 95 4Runner. Um, it's already like one something in the morning around that time. It's pretty late here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And um, I just got the everything all back, back in here. Replaced the timing belt. Replaced the timing belt tensioner. Pretty much did a lot of major work in here. Um, now it's all covered up. Um, I did time it, but I also want to make sure that the car does not like have any misfire. Um, but I, I mean, I did time it right, but and um, but I just want to make sure once I start the car up, I'm not gonna start the car in the morning just yet because I still need to put put some cool in here. Um, but I want to just go over what I've done so far. So. Uh, like I said, timing belt has been replaced. Uh, timing belt tensioner has been replaced. Uh, and the pulley for the tensioner has been also replaced as well. What else here? Water pump has been replaced because uh, that was really the target I was trying to get to. Um, thermostat is also replaced. I know you can't see it because it's all dark in there. Um, oh, there you go. Thermostat's been replaced. That's for that uh, black circle you can see over there. That's the pipeline that goes to the thermostat. Lower radiator pipe has been replaced with a new one. And so with the upper one. Belts has been, uh, actually not the power steering. Um, the power steering is still okay. Um, alternator belt has been replaced and the AC belt has also been replaced. And um, Probably that was one of the reasons why my car was not getting any air conditioning inside. It was not, it was literally a sauna during the hot days. So I don't want to keep my windows down all the time. I want to have some actual AC coming inside the cabin. But aside from that, everything's replaced. I did kind of broke a couple heads on bolts, but I actually replaced those with some extra ones I had. So we're all good. Fan has been, nah, fans that have been replaced. Some people may say, why don't you just also replace a radiator? Um, I, I, I am, I was supposed to do that, but I'm trying to save up some money. And um, um, this one's still okay. And even if this does fail um, within maybe two months or maybe weeks, uh, it's all right because I can, this is just literally in front of me. I can just take off a couple of, um, pipes and bolts 
and take this out and put the new one in and just refill it with some coolant and stuff. And yeah, um, but this thing's all right. This it's not going to fail anytime soon. But it, even if it if it does fail within a week, within a few weeks or months, at least this thing's in front of me, so I don't have to really have to worry about it. So. Hopefully later today, I will, since it's already like one in the morning on a Saturday, I believe. Uh, not, yeah, I believe so. Um, one in the morning or something like that, um, I'll check uh, check on this car and fill up some coolant um, later today. So, that is it for now. All right, we're here with day three of the 95 Forerunner two-wheel drive only model. Yes, this one is this particular forerunner is two wheel drive only. This does not have four wheel drive. No transfer case, no front diff. If you guys don't believe me, I know it's kind of dark. Do my very best right there. See that? No front differential. And also, four-wheel drive forerunners have an extra lever. This one doesn't. I just woke up, so that's why I kind of sound like this. Um, today, we're just gonna go ahead and top up the top of the radiator with some coolant, um, and then we're, I'm going to go ahead and install the skid plate. And then after that, I'll start this car up, see if it misfires or does anything that anything abnormal. I did time the um, the cams on the crankshaft. Um, uh, I did time it to I zeroed out the timing. Um, but in some cases, the camshafts were slightly off, just like maybe a teeny bit. Um, it's like this much uh, yeah this much that's off so I don't think it's really going to misfire I don't think because you know it's still the engine's still doing its four four stroke cycle so as long as it's um, doing its four strokes properly it should be fine um, um, and then the other thing is I'm gonna go ahead and check the power steering belt because this one is a little bit loose, but it's not that bad. The thing is, in this power steering reservoir is already nearly touching the timing cover, so that might need to be changed, but I'm gonna go ahead and just do this to the steering wheel and see if it squeaks. Um, Cause that belt is, is still kind of new but anyways um i'll go ahead and top the, um, the engine off with some coolant and put the skip play back on start her up and uh, see what happens look at that camaro over there I think it's a really loud meaty V8. Time to check out the car. Everything's all good. Alternator belt has tension. Power steering belt also. And also the AC belt down there. Um, I'll put the skid play in a bit, but um, I'm too excited to start her up. So. All right, moment of truth. Will the engine turn on?
and I timed that myself. Job done. I'm gonna go take it out for a test drive. All right, took the car out for a little test drive um, for, for about an hour, and I can safely say, job is well done. Car's not misfiring, um, car's running properly. AC's working, um, the compressor is kicking in, so I did a pretty good job. Now, just keep in mind, this is the first time I've ever done a belt service on this car. That's my first time working on the, on the timing belt. And a person who's never actually gotten real close to, to the engine when it comes to maintenance, I'd say it did a pretty good job at it. So, uh, for a novice like myself, if you have all the parts ready to go, this will probably take you maybe like a couple of hours to maybe at least a day. Um, but in my case, I had new parts being shipped to my door and those came in like in, in different days. So, um, Aside from that, I did a really good job. Um, as a person who's never done something like this before, I'm just a novice, um, but I did pretty much every, uh, a lot of it all by myself. So anyways, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this video of me working on the timing belt. Mainly it's all photos, but, but hey, you know, a video's a video. All right, thanks so much for watching.